Hi, this is Shobha Shankar, professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Vidyavardhaka College of Engineering, Mysore. So in this session, we will take up the second case, that is when losses, transmission losses in the system are neglected, but the limits on the generators are considered. But we are considering the limits on the generators, that is the minimum and maximum limit, but the transmission losses are still neglected. So this is the second case, that is economic schedule, including limits on generators, neglecting losses. So we know that as I already briefed in one of the sessions that the generators in the power system needs to be operated within the minimum and maximum limit. So the maximum limit is decided based on the rating of the generator and the minimum limit is primarily based on the technical feasibility of operating that plant. So the economic dispatch problem is to schedule the generation to minimize the cost subject to the equality constraint. So the equality constraint is total generation is equal to total demand. So the objective function is still the same. That is ensuring that total fuel cost is minimized. And now in addition, we also have the inequality constraint that is the limits on the generator output. Generator, it should be operated within the minimum limit that is PGI minimum and maximum limit is PGI max. So if we assume that in the system, there are NG number of generating plants, each of these generators has to satisfy this constraint. That is the power output of the generators should be within this limit, minimum and maximum limit. So now what is the condition to proceed with the constraint on the limits. So previously, when the limits on the generators are neglected, we have seen that for economic schedule or in order to ensure the total fuel cost is minimized, we have seen that incremental fuel cost of each one of the plants should be the same. So the same procedure is followed here also as in the previous case, till their limits, till the limits on the generators are not violated. So let us assume that in the system, there are two generators, G1 and G2, which would supply the total load. And on each of these generators, there are limits for operating, for their operation, that is minimum and maximum limit. Suppose if any one of the generators exceeds either the lim minimum limit or the maximum limit accordingly, the power output of the plant is fixed at that value and it will be maintained constant at the same value throughout and we will ensure that we are still able to minimize the fuel cost by ensuring that the other plant will have minimum fuel cost or operating cost. So we will take up uh, one problem in order to understand this concept in a better way. So let us assume that the incremental fuel cost in dollar per megawatt hour for two units are given below. So we have the incremental fuel cost for the first plant that is DF1 by DPG1 to be equal to 0 0.01 PG1 plus two dollar per megawatt hour. And that of second DF2 by DPG2 is equal to 0 0.012 PG2 plus 1.6 dollar per megawatt hour. So the incremental fuel costs are specified in dollar per megawatt hour. And the limits will, are also specified on the generating plants. That is the limits on the plants are minimum limit is 20 megawatt and maximum limit is 125 megawatt. So we need to obtain the optimal schedule if the load varies from 50 megawatt to 250 megawatt. So we are assuming that load is varying from 50 megawatt to 250 megawatt. So for this variation in the load, what should be the power output of the two generators or the generating plants such that we will ensure that total fuel cost is minimized. 
So how do we proceed now? So initially we'll find out what is the incremental fuel cost for the two plants when they are evaluated at their minimum limit and at maximum limit of generation. So the minimum limit, it is specified as 20 megawatt. So at 20 cost of plant one, that is lambda one, minimum is given by DF1 by DPG1 and it's equal to $2.2 per megawatt hour. Similarly, we are also able to find out what is the incremental fuel cost of second plant, that is lambda two minimum at minimum limit. Minimum limit is still at 20 only. So we are assuming that PG1 as well as PG2 is at 20 megawatt. The power output of the two plants is at 20 megawatt. Accordingly, we are able to calculate the respective incremental fuel cost for both the generators. So you can observe here, for the first plant, the incremental fuel cost at minimum load is $2.2 per megawatt hour. And for the second, it is $1.84 per megawatt hour. So you can observe that the incremental fuel cost of the second plant is much lesser as compared to the first one. Similarly, at the maximum limit, maximum limit is 125 megawatt. So that is PG max for both the plants. So at this maximum limit, again, we will find out what is the incremental fuel cost for the two plants, that is lambda one max and lambda two max. So the same is observed here also. The incremental fuel cost of the second plant, even at the maximum limit, is lesser as compared to that of the first plant. So for the second, it is at $3.1 per megawatt hour, whereas for the first, it is at $3.25 per megawatt hour. So therefore, you can observe that at light loads, unit one has a higher incremental cost and hence it needs to be operated at its lower limit only because if we operate the first plant at higher loads, the cost of generating or higher output, the cost of generating the power would be more because you can observe that incremental fuel cost of the first plant is higher as compared to the second. So the initial load or otherwise we can say initially the additional load is taken up by the second unit till such time its incremental fuel cost becomes equal to $2.2 per megawatt hour. So at light load, we have already seen that light load, the incremental fuel cost of the second plant is at $1.24 per megawatt hour and that of first one, it is at 2.2. So therefore, what we do is the load is taken up by the second plant initially. Still, its incremental co fuel cost is same as that of plant one. So at PP2 is equal to 50 megawatt. So beyond this, we can observe that the two plants are operated with in equal incremental fuel costs. So the contribution of each unit to meet the demand is obtained by assuming different values of lambda. So when lambda is $3.1 per megawatt hour, unit two operates at its upper limit and further the loads are taken up by unit one because the incremental fuel cost for the second plant is less as compared to that of first one. So in this table, you can observe the plant output as well as the output of the two plants. Correspondingly, the incremental fuel cost and the plant incremental fuel cost. So the first column corresponds to the incremental fuel cost of plant one and second corresponding to plant two. Third corresponds to the plant incremental fuel cost the power fourth one is the power output of first plant. Then we have power output of second. And finally, the plant output. So you can observe that. You can observe that at light loads, the incremental fuel cost of the second plant is less as compared to that of first one. Therefore, we can have a year output for the second as compared to the first and it can ensure that it will meet the specified load and the load is here varying from 50 to 250 megawatt. So correspondingly, when the power output of the second plant is equal to 50, maintaining the power output of the first plant still at 20, the incremental fuel cost of both plant one and plant two becomes same and the plant incremental fuel cost is also the same. So therefore, for a plant output of 70, the power output of second plant should be 50 and that of first is 20. 
you can observe that for various plant outputs starting from 52 to 50 we are finding out what are the incremental fuel cost of both the plants and accordingly you can observe that for few of the plant outputs you can observe that both the plants have equal incremental fuel cost especially for uh, 143.3 you can observe that both the plants have 2.6 as the incremental cost more or less beyond this 70 megawatt output of the plant you can observe that for these two power outputs of the two generators the incremental fuel cost is the same and finally for 250 megawatt demand the power output of the plant should be 125 megawatt each and the second plant has a lesser incremental fuel cost as compared to the first one so this is the graph which shows the plot of the power output of the two plants with respect to the plant output so you can observe that for a particular value of lambda pg1 and pg2 are calculated and we are also able to find out what should be the economic schedule of the two plants for any specific load now in the same problem can we now see what would be the saving in fuel cost for the economic schedule as compared to the case when the load is shared equally so here the load is specified as 180 megawatts so if we refer to the table so wherein we have the power output of the two plants along with the plant output for the plant output or otherwise for the load being equal to 180 megawatt for economic schedule the power output of the second plant should be equal to 100 and that of the first one should be equal to 80 and we can also observe that the incremental fuel cost of both the plants is the same and it is at 2.8 dollar per megawatt hour so it is specified in the next problem that is there any saving in the fuel cost in the economic schedule as compared to the case if the load is to be shared equally by the two plants corresponding to the demand or the load being equal to 180 megawatt so as we have already seen in the table corresponding to this load of 180 megawatt the power output of the first plant is at 80 and that second is at 100 megawatt suppose if the load is shared equally between these two plants then pg1 is equal to pg2 and it's equal to 90 megawatt hence the generation of unit one should increase from 80 to 90 megawatt and that of unit two should decrease from 100 to 90 megawatt if the load is to be shared equally so that means to say that there is increase in cost of unit one since pg1 increases and there is decrease in cost corresponding to unit two since pg2 is decreasing from 100 to 90. so we will now see what is the increase in the cost corresponding to unit one so we are able to find out increase in cost of unit one as df1 by dpg1 so we are integrating this incremental fuel cost over the limits from 80 to 90. so what do we get now so we are able to find out that increase in the cost of unit one when the power output of the plant is increased from 80 megawatt to 90 megawatt is 28.5 dollar per hour similarly we will also see what is the decrease in the cost corresponding to unit two when the power output of the plant is decreased from 100 megawatt to 90 megawatt so now we want to ensure that if the load is shared equally that is both the plants would provide a power output of 90 megawatt in order to meet the load of 180 megawatt so now the decrease in cost for unit 2 is minus 27.4 dollar per hour so the total increase in the cost if the load is shared equally is 1.1 dollar per hour hence we can say that the savings in the fuel cost if economic schedule is used is 1.1 dollar per hour instead of the load being shared equally so there is savings in the fuel cost especially when we have the coordinated economic schedule among the generating units in the system
Thank you.